Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans. Welcome to Ramacro. It's time for another voicemail. Today's voicemail is from Frankie. Let's listen to what Frankie has to say. Hi, Lloyd. Uh, my name is Frankie. I am calling from the southern U.S. And I was wanting to get your thoughts on the possibility of uh, the organization implementing any sort of reforms. And I know we generally would dismiss that idea, but as uh, in recent years we've seen the organization has reformed their approach to mental health. Uh, remember a couple of years ago, uh, Sam Hurd mentioned that some witnesses should seek out uh, professional help. And then this year's convention had the video of the young woman who was actually recommended by an elder to seek professional health. And so as far as uh, mental health goes and the way that they've, they did soften their approach there, is it too optimistic, do you think, to to hope that we might see reforms in other things, whether it's something big like the blood policy or shunning or something more mundane, like giving witnesses more liberty in what they can do with their daily lives. So just wanted to get your thoughts on what we might expect and uh, appreciate all you do. Thanks. Thank you for your message. That's a really interesting question. Can we expect more reforms? Um, is it too optimistic to hope that the organization might soften its stance in various areas? You gave a really interesting example, which I touched on in this sushi, which Tibor will show if he's gracious. I can't quite remember the name or number, but I'm sure he will. Uh, you're right, there was a testimony at the 2021 Pursue Peace convention where one of the interviewees described a mental health crisis and was advised by her elders to pursue professional mental health support, which is to be applauded. Um, and I guess you could say that is a reform, Although the organization, I mean, you're going to struggle to find examples of where the organization has outright condemned mental health support. There are far too many examples of where the organization has had an opportunity to encourage mental health support, including in recent video propaganda, and has instead pointed to getting support from elders or from family members or by praying, or whatever. But yes, let's celebrate whenever they get it right. And as I recall in my rebuttal to that particular video, I did say that it was a good thing, it was positive, that they were making at least some improvement, and we should applaud them whenever they make changes for the better. Can we expect more such changes... I mean, never say never. I genuinely hope that we will see more changes for the better. It's just that if I'm going to write a list of examples of where the organization has made positive reforms and then write a list of examples of where the organization has either doubled down on its worst policies or in some cases even exacerbated existing bad policies so that they're even worse. I think that the latter list would, would be significantly longer. Um, and that's concerning. It's concerning as well that, as I've explained in a previous video, thumbnail here if Tibor is gracious, it's concerning that of all the current governing body members, the one who seems to have the most power and influence is Mark Sanderson. If you've seen this video, a leaked HLC internal video, where Mark Sanderson is schooling HLC elders on how they should deal with doctors when it comes to making sure babies refuse blood, even if it means the baby's death. Um, just watch that video. 
if you're in any doubt as to how Mark Sanderson feels on the issue of blood. You know? The blood transfusion policy or the pro prohibition of blood transfusions is his baby. It's something that he clearly cares very passionately about. He did once work on the hospital information services desk. He's apparently been very influential in that area. And so if there were any governing body member who you wouldn't want to be pulling the strings, particularly in the area of blood transfusions, if you're hoping that there will be a meaningful reform in that area, Mark Sanderson would, would be the last person I would want to be in a position of significant influence on the governing body. And when you look at the last two appointments to the governing body, both of whom have apparently been fast-tracked through, they, I mean, they've barely served time as helpers. They've essentially come out of nowhere, and now they're immediately governing body members, um, similar to, you could argue, Kenneth Cook. Um, it For me... And I, you know, this is, I'm just speculating at this point, but it feels almost as though Mark Sanderson was appointed in 2012. I think it was 2012. And he seems to be, again, this is speculation. It wouldn't surprise me if he were shaping the governing body in his image by fast tracking through people who will sing and dance to his tune. That's my honest fear. And that doesn't bode well for the organization having meaningful hope of reform in the near future. There's always hope that they will do tweaks here and there. Um, the mental health one is good, although I'm skeptical as to how much they're going to push this narrative of seek out mental health professional support. I think to a degree it's going to be in their interests to at least be seen on one or two occasions to be saying the right thing, even though their true intentions or their true policy is perhaps something quite different. That's um, unfortunately the nature of the organisation that we all know and that we're talking about here. So I have to say I'm quite pessimistic about reform. I wish I could be more positive and I would love to be wrong, but that's how I feel really about reform. And goodness knows there's so many areas in which this organization does need to reform. One last thumbnail for you, T Boy, if you're feeling gracious. Here's a video I made listing uh, a number of years ago now all of the reforms that need to be made. There's a lot. There are, there are a lot of areas in which this organization needs to change completely. And I made that video not with the hope that those reforms would be made, but really more to show how almost insurmountable the feat is of making taking this abusive evil organization and making it benign, making it nice and, you know, a positive force in people's lives. It's basically insurmountable. You know, the only real solution, as far as I'm concerned, is for the governing body to be disbanded and, quite frankly, sent to jail for their part in the industrial scale cover-up of child sexual abuse. So that's how I feel <laughs> about that question. Again, I wish I could be more positive, but I've at least been honest with you. And thank you very much for calling in. If you would like to leave a voicemail, the thing to do is go to speakpipe.com forward slash cedars, remembering to indicate clearly if you don't want me to broadcast your message on this channel. But that's all we have time for. Thank you for watching. <laughs>